In 2021, I was able to visit SeaWorld San Antonio for the very first time. I knew it wasn't going to be the craziest coaster collection as they only have six roller coasters, but there were some standouts I was looking forward to, such as Wavebreaker and Texas Stingray. In this video, I'm going to rank all the coasters at SeaWorld San Antonio. Let's get into it. So to kick off the list at number 6 is Super Grover's Boxcar Derby. This is the kitty coaster of the park, located in the Sesame Street area. There's really nothing else to it, a kitty coaster to come in at the very bottom. So quickly moving on to the number 5 spot is Journey to Atlantis. This ride is just that, a ride. Personally, I wouldn't call this a coaster. It reminds me of a modern boat ride. It's cool, but generally, I would skip out on it to ride anything else in the park. Then again, this park needs a ride like this. Located in San Antonio, water rides are a must. It just gets too hot. And it showed. The whole time I was there, Journey to Atlantis had a decent line. But in terms of a roller coaster, this just ain't it. You go up a lift hill, hit two turntables and a small itty bitty roller coaster section before diving down into a splashdown. So the general consensus is a great water ride, not necessarily a good roller coaster. So moving on to the number 4 spot is Wavebreaker the Rescue Coaster. This is a really unique family coaster, featuring a pre-show and two launches. Within this park, it definitely has the best theming. It also has really cool trains. I wish I could say the same thing about the layout though. Obviously, it's supposed to be a family coaster, so you can't expect anything too crazy. That being said, aside from the two launches and the first hills following, Wavebreaker really doesn't do much either. Most of the track is just twists and turns over some water. In comparison to Journey to Atlantis, it is the better roller coaster, and that's why it's able to get the number 4 spot on the list. Coming in at the halfway point, number 3 is Steel Eel, a Morgan knockoff hyper coaster. I say that because it doesn't hit 200 feet. I still enjoyed it though. It's the tallest in the park and has a great length at 3,700 feet. I wish the airtime was a little bit more noticeable in the layout. That's obviously the downfall of Steel Eel. There's really not any force behind its elements. The potential is there, it just wasn't hit. The first drop is good though, and the duration is a must for this park. That being said, the rest of the coasters in the park have the feelings wanted behind a great roller coaster. And that brings us to the runner up position. It's crazy how this list jumps in quality so clearly. You go from an array of slower family coasters to a mediocre at best Morgan coaster. Without these gems at the top two, SeaWorld San Antonio really has nothing noteworthy and would easily get lost in the sea of parks in North America. No pun intended. So what are these two coasters exactly? Coming in at the number 2 spot is Great White. This is a B&M inverted coaster, also known as a Batman clone. So while it might be a clone, it's the only coaster in the park to feature inversions and is probably the most force you will feel at the park. The g-forces it pulls is outstanding, especially for how small this coaster footprint is. Great White truly is the definition of small but powerful. For a park with the coaster collection such as this, the three inversions brings a whole lot to the table. This all easily puts Great White above all the other coasters and in at number 2, but there's still one more that is superior to me. So on to the number 1 coaster at SeaWorld San Antonio. That would be the newest addition to the park, Texas Stingray, which opened in 2020. It's the park's only wooden coaster, manufactured by GCI. This automatically puts the coaster in the top portion of the list. The uniqueness of the coaster type is important to the diversity of the park. It may not be the tallest, but the speed can definitely be felt. Everything about Texas Stingray is completely different to what the park already offers. And the coaster just does it so well, it's the top coaster in the park. Really, its only competition is Great White. That coaster has a good uniqueness factor to it as well, being an inverted coaster and featuring the only inversions in the park. However, at this stage, it's about the overall experience. So what is better, force and inversions or quick transitions and speed? For me, I love quick transitions. That's why I put Texas Stingray at the top. I can see some people saying that Texas Stingray is a twister model from GCI and therefore not bringing as much force. That would lead them to believe that Great White is the better coaster overall. Out of the six coasters at SeaWorld San Antonio, these two coasters are the only two that bring some controversy in my mind. But when it's all said and done, I think Texas Stingray gets the crown for this park. Now before I end the video, I do want to compare it to the other ranking video I did for Busch Gardens Tampa. The top coaster at that park was Montu the B&M inverted coaster. 
I think it's cool to put the top coasters in the chain against each other. So that would mean Texas Stingray versus Montu. And is it really a question? Montu would easily win as it's probably the best inverted roller coaster in the country. Even if I were to put Great White, another inverted coaster against it, Montu would still win. I think that's just something pretty cool to end off with. And that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. What do you guys think of these rankings? I think the list was an easier one to make, but I still see some controversial choices. So would you change any of them? I would love to know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.